Welcome to Complexity Made Simple and my name is Paul Allen and before we get into today's uh, fantastic video newsletter what I'd like to talk to you about is all the materials that you can purchase to help to support the channel. We've got these fantastic textbooks that range from the simple statistical process control for small batch production. We've got the seven quality tools for world-class problem solving, which is essentially yellow belt material. Then we move on to design of experiments for 21st century engineers. Every engineer and scientist needs to be able to do design of experiments. And then finally, drink tea and read the paper. The most fantastic green belt handbook you can buy on the market today. Full of practical tips and fantastic physics that'll help you become a world-class engineer and a world-class quality engineer. Of course, you can also click on the link to buy me a coffee and make a donation. That would be fantastic. But at the very least, click on subscribe, click on like the video, because it all helps to support the channel. Many thanks for your help. And now on to today's video. Welcome to the latest video. And in this video newsletter, what we're going to take a look at is how to use a DOE to improve your MSA. Okay, which is kind of using two heavy statistical techniques, one against the other. So often when you do an MSA, so using DOE, when you, when you do an MSA, of course, you get a bad result. And then what you've got to try and do is you've got to try and improve the methodology that you're using. Now, sometimes that means writing quite specific standard operating procedures, restricting the equipment that's used, uh, enforcing calibration routines, all sorts of things. Things that could be quite costly. Now, we don't really want to do those things unless we have to. So using a DOE to improve MSA. So in order to prove that the particular things that you want to control are needed, you can do a DOE on the variables in your measurement system. So somebody presented this to me last week in a, in a project. They'd done an MSA, it was in a laboratory. Now, often laboratories, you're trying to control uh, well-educated people. You know, you've got uh, lab technicians, people that have got a degree, engineers, etc. They don't necessarily want to follow rules. They think that it's okay to just get on and do the test. So we need some evidence that certain things are, um, are needed, certain controls are needed. Now, if you're going to do a DOE on an MSA, what is it that you're going to do? Essentially, you're going to measure the same sample, the same item, So of course, when I measure the same item, what should happen? Well, I should get an identical result, shouldn't I? So what we're sort of looking for, it's the opposite of a real DOE in the sense that hopefully we'll see no signals whatsoever. So in other words, when we plot a graph, what do we want to see? We want to see the graphs, you know, factor A, factor B, factor C, factor D. So these are things that we've changed in the measurement system. So this could be calibration done, calibration not done, equipment A, equipment B. Yeah, we've changed them high and low. And what we want to see is no signal. Obviously, if what we see is factor A does that, if that was calibration, for instance, 
that's telling us that whatever we've done to calibration is changing the result. So that's going to be important. It's important that we control that in some way, because if we don't control the calibration, it's going to drive completely different results. So that's what you're doing in the DOE. You're going to measure the same sample. Now I've got a little, like I said, I've got a case study here. It was something that somebody presented to me last week. They had a measurement system in a laboratory. And so I just want to show it to you and the way that these graphs have shown up and what this knowledge is telling us. So you set the experiment up, it's exactly the same. You identify variables, you identify levers. It could be the equipment that you're using, the method that you're using, whether you do calibration before you start the, the test or not. Um, all sorts of variables that are in your measurement system methodology. And whilst you're changing those variables, you measure the same sample. So that's the basic technique. Let's take a look at a case study. Okay, so here's the, here's the little example. Uh, it's, a, it's a filter process. I'll, I'll just zoom in here so we can see the variables. So here are the variables. Look, there's five things that they're gonna change in this particular measurement process. The filter kit that's being used, the filter paper, the O-ring that's used, the operator that's running the test, and the pressure when the test equipment was set up. So they're the five variables. That's what the five lines are on these graphs. Now the one I'm just going to take a look at is for the Y, which is just the mean of the result. Okay, so here's the Here's the Y bar. Now look at this. What this is telling us, look, is the filter paper is really influential in the result. And look at the result. The time went from 40 to 70. Okay, so the result of this test is massively different depending on which filter paper you use. Now what that filter paper was, was supplier A versus supplier B. All right, so you can see that we need to fix the filter paper because if you allow people to change the supplier, that's going to make a dramatic effect. Pressure is also making a dramatic effect. It's moving the result from down here, it's about 47, up to about 62, something like that. Again, that's making a dramatic effect. So that needs to be fixed, that those things are important. Now obviously you would decide whether the this one here, the O-ring, whether that's important enough, the filter kit and the operator. The operator's making the least amount of um, difference. Well that's very good because it means that just accidental variability isn't changing your result too much. You don't have to worry too much about the operator. Other than the operator, would have to follow the basic procedures around the pressure and the filter paper, etc. But there's the DOE. And what I said earlier, these lines, if, they, if these five variables make no difference to the result, all of these lines would be flat. They would be horizontal. They're not horizontal. There's a dramatic signal. Okay. I mean, it's as simple as that. If those variables made no difference, it would look like that because they do make a difference. You can see the signals. What did we do? We measured the same sample during that DOE. Use a DOE to find which variables your measurement system is sensitive to. Then of course, when you put some rules around that, rules that sometimes people don't wanna follow or rules that could be expensive or slightly slightly slower to do the test or whatever, you can justify the enforcement of those rules because you have the data from the DOE. Using DOE to improve your MSA.